If you're looking to boost your Mutt team or make some money by selling coins, check out MobileMaddenCoins.com. Use code CLICKWID at checkout for a 10% discount. Hey, what is going on, guys? Clickwood here, back again, bringing you guys some more Madden 16 Ultimate Team content. And guys, today, what we're actually going to be talking about is last night's UFC 200 fight card. Uh, so, guys, the main things, obviously, we're going to talk about the main uh, pay-per-view card. We might also drop in a few things about the undercard. But, uh, you know, I really just want to talk about what I my opinions are in general on what happens when there are huge fights like this it happens every single freaking time I go on Twitter after an event where it's like a big time UFC fight card or a Floyd Mayweather fight or you know something like that and all that I see are people who pretty clearly don't watch MMA all that often bitching about how this fight was boring or you know so and so didn't do anything or i wish so and so the other guy that didn't win would have won because so and so who won pretty decisively is a bitch stuff like that it drives me absolutely up a freaking wall and it has for years i used to cover the ufc semi-professionally uh, for Bleacher Report back in the day and so this was a really common thing we would have you know big fights and a lot of times it was Brock Lesnar and you know he would go out there and he would smash a guy like Frank Mir like he did in his second fight or you know do something like that and it wouldn't necessarily be one of the fights where you're like oh my gosh he got like a crazy knockout on him but he thoroughly dominated the fight and did a shitload of damage and that's what Brock Lesnar did last night against Mark Hunt this guy went out there, if you guys are not, if you didn't watch the fight and you want to go back, make sure you don't listen to the rest of this video, by the way, because I am going to be talking spoilers here, but Brock did go out there and inflict a ton of damage on DeMarc Hunt. Uh, he won the fight 29-27 on all three judges' scorecards. The second round, he didn't win. Yes, the second round was boring because there really wasn't a lot of action. And it's kind of a classic case of why I don't believe that uh, MMA bouts should all be scored the same. Every round scored the same. I'm glad to see that all three judges scored. I believe it was the third round, a 10-8 round for Brock. But to be completely honest with you, if you think the first round and the second round should be scored evenly, you don't know what the hell you're talking about. Because that's absolutely ridiculous. Brock landed like four takedowns in the first round and inflicted a ton of damage. And he basically didn't have anything happen to him in the first round. But then in the second round, uh, Mark Hunt, yeah, yes, I would say definitely won that round. But it wasn't like extremely decisive. He didn't do a whole lot with it. He didn't rock Brock. He didn't really have him in any trouble whatsoever the entire round. And so to me, I don't understand why those rounds are scored the same. My personal opinion has been for quite some time that the 10-8 round needs to be more utilized. So I'm really happy to see that it was at least used in the third round in this fight. But the big thing to me, guys, we talked about uh, the fact that these people are out here on Twitter, casual MMA fans, and, and by all means, guys, say what you want to say. If you weren't excited by the fight, by all means, that's totally fine. That's your opinion. But I don't understand where people are coming from when they watch these UFC fights because I guess they expect that every fight is going to be a kickboxing match. I mean, are these guys just going to go out here and just throw the entire time, never go for takedowns, never, you know, do utilize their jujitsu, never utilize their wrestling, which, by the way, a lot of these guys are amazing at jujitsu and amazing at wrestling and not so great at stand-up, or maybe they're just kind of equals at stand-up, but they know that if they take the fight to the ground that they can take an advantage. I don't understand why people don't get that. If you want to watch a fight that's just stand-up, watch boxing, watch kickboxing. Glory kickboxing is extraordinarily exciting. It's extremely entertaining, and I think anyone that wanted to watch something like that should absolutely do so. I fully encourage everyone that did not enjoy tonight's fight card to go watch kickboxing and go watch boxing if you don't think that tonight's fights were entertaining, because I'll tell you, you'll probably find those fights to be a lot more entertaining. However, the mainstream is mixed martial arts, okay? And mixed martial arts means you're going to do whatever it takes to win the fight. And in this case, for example, for Daniel Cormier against Anderson Silva, what it took to win that fight was him utilizing his wrestling. 
Anderson Silva, yes, he struggled. Even in this past year, he had a tough fight against Michael Bisping. He lost that fight. He's had other close fights that he also lost because of striking. And guess what? I understand why people think that Daniel Cormier could go up there and stand up and, and knock Anderson Silva out. It's very possible. However, you can't tell me that that's more likely to happen than Daniel Cormier controlling him on the ground, getting the takedowns, and ground and pounding him for the victory. And that's exactly what Daniel Cormier did. 30-26 across the board. Dominated the fight without question. Again, more 10-8 rounds. Absolutely love it. Very, very rare, though, in MMA. I don't think there were any other 10-8 rounds on the entire card, if I remember correctly. There might not have been any other 10-8 rounds this entire weekend, and there were three fight cards. So that just goes to tell you tell you how rare it is. But, uh, again, it's crazy to me that people thought that Daniel Cormier should stand up and fight Anderson Silva. Despite the fact that Anderson Silva struggled in his striking this past year and, and in recent fights, even against Chris Weidman uh, and in other fights, too, he struggled at times in his striking. The bottom line is Anderson Silva is still one of the most dangerous strikers in the history of mixed martial arts. And he showed that at the end of this fight when he landed that kick. OK, he landed. I don't know if it actually hit him in the liver. I, I don't remember. I, I, I don't remember what side your liver is on. It's very possible that he hit Cormier in the liver, which causes a whole hell of a lot of problems. And uh, he almost finished that fight against Cormier. Absolutely crazy. But at the end of the day, Daniel Cormier did walk away with the victory in this one. Jose Aldo as well. Big, big win for him over Frankie Edgar. Dominant victory. I don't understand how people would say that that fight's not interesting. I enjoyed that fight very thoroughly, to be honest with you. And then, of course, Amanda, Amanda Nunez versus Misha Tate. Huge knockout victory for Amanda Nunez. I don't think a lot of people saw that coming. Well, I guess, actually, I take that back. It wasn't a knockout victory. It was a submission victory via re rear naked choke. But it was... Basically because of her striking, because she knocked her out so many... I mean, she knocked her down quite a few different times, busted up her nose, and then she submitted her with a rear naked choke, but I think it had more to do with uh, her kind of cutting off her breathing than anything else. Uh, as we're coming to the end of this gameplay, guys, I just want to say, again, uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the UFC 200 fight card, and uh, I hope people will understand that mixed martial arts is not kickboxing. These guys are going out here and doing what it takes to win, so keep that in mind when you're watching MMA, and don't disrespect these fighters who bust their asses and go out there and get wins. I mean, understandably, yes, we want exciting fights, but at the end of the day, people will bitch if they don't win the fight and they do something quote-unquote stupid. So, you know, it's just one of those stupid things that bothers me about MMA fans. So, uh, we score the touchdown here and we do get the victory here as my opponent is not going to be able to convert. Hope you guys enjoyed the gameplay. If you did, do me a favor, drop a like and let me know in the comment section below what did you guys think about UFC 200? Do you agree with me that it was an entertaining fight card and that people I just think are being very overcritical? of the whole thing. Also, by the way, undercard fights, really, really good stuff. Joe Lozon with the victory. Gayhard Musasi with the victory by knockout. Jim Miller with a knockout. I mean, definitely go check those out if you guys didn't get to see them. Big, big wins there. Um, and of course, guys, it, I, to me, I just think this whole thing was an uh, extremely entertaining fight card. Sucks that John Jones is probably going to be out for two years with the suspension. But at the end of the day, Daniel Cormier has done everything that he could do to make that fight happen. So you've got to give full credit to him. I think it's going to be interesting to see what they do with Brock Lesnar over the next couple of uh, months here as well. Obviously, he has the WWE match against Randy Orton at SummerSlam. But after that, I mean, you could realistically rebook Cain Velasquez versus Brock Lesnar. I think it makes sense. Or Junior Dos Santos, which is a fight that we always wanted to see as well. So let me know in the comment section below, did you enjoy it? And also, what should they do with Brock Lesnar? Should he fight again in the UFC? Would you want to see it? Thanks again, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. Drop a like, subscribe if you're new, and I will talk to you guys again soon.